I always thought that Scarlatti was a uh, Italian composer from the 17th century, and of course he was. <laughs> 15th century, sorry, but, uh, but 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 I now know that it's a uh, New Zealand business development consulting company um, as well. They've borrowed the name, and. Um, Karen Mitchell Moore and Denise uh, Busel are from uh, Scaletti, and they're going to show us and tell us about uh, all the advantages that they they have and and uh, for for people from catchments. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kia ora koutou, ko Denise toko ingoa. Uh, my name is Denise. I live in Ōtutahi in Christchurch, uh, and I work for Scarlatti. We're here to talk about evaluation. We are very enthusiastic <laughs> about evaluation. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Hi, everyone. My name is Karen Mitchell Moore. Um, I'm also a senior research manager at Scarlatti, and I lead the monitoring evaluation team here. Um, so, uh, Scaletti, we're a research evaluation and analytics company. Um, we undertake a lot of work in the primary industries uh, across New Zealand. Um, we are currently undertaking some evaluation work with MPI and with a number of the regional projects and catchment groups um, as part of the Extension Services program. So, we are here today to share some of the things that we have have learned. Absolutely. And evaluation, <laughs> because that's what we are uh, about uh, for this anyway. And we know that we could talk to you, we could tell you heaps about evaluation, because like I said, we are enthusiastic about evaluation, but we also know that there's lots of really cool stuff happening out in all of the work that you are doing. And so what we would like you to do, if you can flick to the next slide, um, we would like you to spend a couple of minutes at your table having a chat. Is anyone doing any really cool evaluation activities? Maybe you're evaluating some activities. Maybe you're thinking about evaluating your project or at that catchment level. What value have you got from evaluating? So let's spend a couple of minutes having a quick discussion at your table. What value? <laughs> All right, hopefully you've had a chance to hear a little bit about the value that someone, at least someone at your table, has been getting from evaluation and evaluating things. We haven't got time to hear from everyone, but we'd love to hear from a couple of people. And we have chocolate because <laughs> it's three o'clock on Friday afternoon. And I feel like this is the only um, acceptable way of getting a little bit more interaction. So Nadine has a microphone and she has chocolate. Would anyone <laughs> like to share what value you've got from evaluating? Oh, go, Sarah. <laughs> not on, not on. It's, it's on, it's just quiet. It's just quiet? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There's chocolate on the line, so we've really thought about this, Denise. Um, we thought good ideas, you know. Uh, we had engagement because rather than people running away, you know, we get and put the bottle top in the bucket now and ask a question. Um, you can show what you've achieved and sort of get recognition and some celebration goes in there as well because people feel really proud and great feedback for our local venues when we've done something and people say this is an awesome venue and all those little committees go wow, that's so cool. That's really cool, isn't it? So celebration of success, some tweaking and being able to give some good feedback to the community. Thank you, Sarah. Anything else? Yeah. Woohoo. Chocolate. Yay. <laughs> I'm doing this because Tarini said we had to have chocolate. <laughs> um, with some of the catchment groups that I um, work with, I don't know whether it's evaluating, but we collect information. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to manage a catchment group is to find out what everybody wants to do and help them to do it. Mm -hmm. And you'll only get a small percentage, like we, we have 250 farmers or landowners in this group. Um, the most we've ever got to a meeting at one time is 70. So if you want to find out all the things that people want to do, and I usually couch the question something along the lines of labour and time was not a limitation to you, what would you like to do on your property, mm -hmm. then that provides me with the information about what I need to write um, with the catchment group a funding application for, because if you're already working with people for what they already want to do, there's no problem with motivation, engagement, or anything like that. 
So Such the right. only way you can collect that, if you're one person working with 250, 300 people, is to use evaluation systems and we use SurveyMonkey. Awesome. That's can really we have our chocolate now? <laughs> Absolutely. It's right there. <laughs> Definitely deserve chocolate. And um, yeah, what I'm hearing is you're wanting to know what success looks like so that you can work out what to keep an eye on, what to monitor, and what to evaluate. Okay. How are we doing for time? Can we hear one, per one more? Yeah, yeah I think let's hear one more. Yeah. Anyone else want to share the value you've got from evaluating? Ooh. -hoo. Denise, you presented at our AGM, so it was an opportunity for our members in a very short period of time to get a very clear um, idea of how their committee had got on with the projects mm -hmm. that they had given us permission to do. So mm -hmm. it was clarity in a short period of time, and it kind of cemented our achievements, really, and put it in a way that was very clear, concise, and independent. Yeah, um, and we didn't pay him, we really didn't, <laughs> but he does deserve chocolate. <laughs> awesome, so clarity is what I'm hearing, some value there, and being able to show that uh, you know, your committee and the project is achieving things. Mm. So it sounds like that evaluation is really valuable and worthwhile, thank you, Nadine. It's, um, Oh, we've got more chocolate. It's okay. We're, I came prepared. <laughs> Alrighty. So that does bring us to um, what we're here for, which is evaluation and the extension services evaluation in particular. So Karen, tell us more. Yeah, that's right. So I guess in addition to, to some of those benefits that, we've, um, that you've just mentioned, the extension services evaluation work aims to support the regional projects or the catchment groups that we're working with to evaluate the activities that they're doing and, and the impact of those on their communities. Um, also to support those regional projects to grow their own evaluation skills and confidence so that they can continue those on with these catchment groups, um, as well as providing an overarching evaluation uh, and insights about the impact of the extension services investment overall. So we'll tell you just a little bit about the work that we're doing and then we'll uh, get into the good stuff of um, some of the insights and things we've learned so far and how we've collected that data. So we started by working with MPI and the regional projects uh, to put together a national evaluation framework. So this covers the, the range of outcomes that the program is trying to achieve, so around environmental, financial and wellbeing. Um, it, I guess that becomes the, the guide for us um, of what we're collecting. Um, then we've tailored this with each of the regional projects. So we've worked with them, as you've heard over the last couple of days, there are a lot of similarities in the, the work that's been done, but there are a lot of differences in, in niche work that's happening. So we wanted to make sure that the evaluation framework was fit for purpose for each of those projects. Um, and then this process has helped us to, um, to work out what we need to keep track of, what data needs to be collected along the way. Then we've worked with the regional projects to put together a suite of tools um, that they can use to collect that data um, to build up that, that knowledge base. So we'll share um, three of the things that we've learned so far. Um, but before we do that, we just really wanted to acknowledge um, we're working with 14 regional projects um, that have received the Extension Services um, project funding. Um, we've worked in collaboration with them and we really appreciate the, the work that they've been doing with us in the evaluation space. Um, the data that has been collected has all come from them, so thank you very much. And the feedback that we've got on our tools and our processes so that um, what we can do in the evaluation space just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, so um, uh, insight number one is around the, uh, the influence of the regional projects on environmental changes. So 82% um, of the, the farmers or the catchment group members believe that their involvement with the project has influenced the changes that they've been making on farm. So some of those environmental changes, um, you know, things like fencing waterways, undertaking soil testing, uh, riparian planting, uh, monitoring water quality, are all some of those changes that, um, that have been recorded. Awesome. And um, so this information has come from surveys that the projects, we've worked with the projects on, and they've been able to gather that data through surveys. So what we wanted to do now was get, like, get a bit of an indication of who's using what in the room. Uh, and to do that, we're going to introduce you to another tool. So yeah, next slide. Could you grab out your phone and open it up? And you can either use the QR code that's there or you open whatever internet browser you use. And if you put in Slido, 
www.thepodcast.com. I'm doing it along with you, so hopefully this works. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, we've got a backup. It's all good. Uh, Slido.com, and you can put in that number, and you should get to a page that will give you a poll in a tick. Yep, give us a wave if you've got there. Yeah. Oh, oh, a few people. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Any last people just putting that number in? 2H04239. All right, I was trying to do it nice and slowly. All right, most people got it. Slido. All right, if you take us to the next. This is your test question. So if you go to the polls, how would you rate lunch? Everyone knows <laughs> that at you know, workshops, conferences, forums, it's really important to get the food right. So rate your lunch. Woohoo. And this is our test question. Oh, nice. Okay. Wow, yeah. lunch was lunch good. was good. Lunch was very good. Yeah, excellent. So I'm I'm picking at the stage. Everybody's on to Slido, and we know how to use it, and we're feeling okay. Yep, excellent. Good stuff. Um, and also, um, organisers, Landcare Trust, awesome lunch, and Niwa who sponsored it. Thank you very much. It was very very cool. Alrighty. So the important question to come back to our evaluation insight is we wanted to know. Who's using surveys out there? There's a whole range. We've heard about SurveyMonkey. There's different ways you could do it, but who's using them? So let's go to the next question. So who surveyed their catchment group? Um, yes, no, not yet, but thinking about it. Woo. Ooh, awesome. So you can see in the top right, the number of people who are responding. So 63, 67. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. And lots of people thinking about it. Mm. That, that makes our hearts sing as evaluators. <laughs> that is very, very good to, to hear. Um, and, and yeah, we've got ideas, so come and chat. Um, <laughs> all righty. So for those of you who have said yes, you surveyed your catchment group, maybe you've been able to pull out some data that we've, like what we've talked about, that insight around that your project is contributing to environmental change, practice change, action on farm. Have you got a top tip? We'd love to hear a top tip. So Nadine, can you come and grab some more chocolate? And... Top tips. Top tip, just one. So mm. who's got a top tip for top how to do a tip. survey well? Oh, we've got a waving in the oh, back. Waving <laughs> at the back, was it? Oh yeah, right at the back. Sorry, Nadine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good Sorry, stuff. We're sending on a cross country adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, no, no. This is good. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Offer people chocolate is a brilliant incentive. Sorry. Yes, go. Um, be able to show the people back what their results have done. So, as a result nice. of the survey, we have done this or MPR yeah. BI. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Well, again, we did not pay you, but thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so, the, uh, so a top tip is to make sure that you're feeding back the results and showing um, what came through in the results from a survey, uh, making sure that people know. Uh, any other one last top tip before we move on to ours? Anything else that people would say? No Keep other tip. Sorry? Keep it brief. Keep it brief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great top tip. Mm -hmm. Think about what you really want to get, what information you really want to get, and just ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Don't ask all of the other things. Um, we need to get you chocolate. It's a good <laughs> one. Oh, yes. Keep it relevant. Some mm -hmm. people don't like the age section, the gender mm -hmm. section, the what, so good. Ethni what your ethnicity is and all that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do we really need to know those things? Sometimes, no, we don't. Mm. So don't ask them. Mm. Yeah. Get the questions you really want. Um, so what else would we add, Karen? Yeah. There's different ways you can do surveys. Um, yeah, that, yeah. That's right. So, uh, you know, phone surveys, it could be um, a, something that's given out a uh, paper form at an event. It could be something uh, using Google Forms or SurveyMonkey. There's a, a lot of different tools, and, and I think it's just figuring out what um, you know. What is the vehicle that works best for your catchment group? If, if you're using Google Forms all the time, go with that. If you've used SurveyMonkey before, go with that. There's no sort of right or wrong. Or mail, old-fashioned mm. mail still works. So yeah, if that's the way that's going to engage your audience, um, so that would be one of our top tips. Mm. Excellent. Next insight, Karen. 
one. Um, so the second insight we've got there around the, um, the impact of project activities on wellbeing. Uh, so 79% of farmers or catchment group members that came along to events uh, ran by the regional projects felt more connected um, to others after the event. Um, so some of the projects that we're working with are, are you know, capturing this uh, confidence, uh, you know, around confidence of implementing the necessary changes as a result of events. So there, there's a lot of things that can be captured in that wellbeing space around, um, you know, how people are feeling, the connections yeah. that they're making as a result of involvement in catchment groups. Yeah, it's really cool. And this data came through event activity feedback. Okay, so actually asking people at the end of something like this or a workshop or a field day, hey, yeah, how are you feeling? Are you, do you feel more connected with others as a result of coming along to this activity? So we were keen to know who's doing activity feedback. Next Slido poll. So grab your phone again. Do you collect feedback at activities or events? Woohoo. Okay. Yes, mm. this is looking good. Mm -hmm. Again, bringing joy to our hearts as evaluators. <laughs> Lots of people doing that. Over half of you, I'm going to go with that. The 8% of you that aren't, we want to talk with you. We would love to talk with you. We've got some chocolate. We can, we can work on this. It's good. Awesome. So lo over half of you are collecting feedback at activities and events mm -hmm. um, at everyone not yeah, or at least at some. some. Yeah, that's right. Oh, oh mm. I can't even read my own question. <laughs> at every activity yeah. or some. Yeah. yeah, nice. Not yet, but want to. Mm. Awesome. So again, Nadine, we need you again. Different, um, can I grab the different flavor of chocolate? Uh, we're keen to hear a couple of top tips from the audience again. So yeah, <laughs> anyone have a top tip for collecting feedback at events or activities? Nadine has chocolate. Oh, Anna, go. <laughs> uh, at the end of your event, have a big sheet of paper beside the open bar, and before they can have the drink, they must put the sticky note on it or the comment on it. <laughs> yes. A very uh, famous Australian evaluator once said that if you've got your participants in the room, they're captive. Do not let them go until they've given you some feedback. We've got another hand over here for a top tip. Uh, mine oh, was the so, same, yeah, yeah. actually, uh, bribery. Bribery, right. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Bribery, it were incentivization. Maybe we can call it something different, but yeah, it is good. Another top tip over here. Um, mine's building on the alcohol idea. Um, and also the bucket idea from over here earlier. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. What if we give our catchment group members a bottle and use the bottle top to vote in the buckets? Oh, nice. <laughs> so to get a drink, you need, yeah, yeah. Got it. nice. I like it. I like it. Anything that will help that is going to give people the opportunity to give feedback and quickly and simply. Excellent. No one else? Last one. No. Oh, Sarah down here. <laughs> have to share the chocolate, Sarah. <laughs> I already have. <laughs> oh, well done. Gone. Um, we did it as a form of bar, uh, bribery, uh, but it was with barbecues. So we mm -hmm. made them give their idea over on the post-it before they got their yep. sausage or steak. And, you know, yep. that worked really well. Lots mm -hmm. of ideas. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, yes, take opportunities where you can, when you can, to get feedback at events because it's really good data. Um, we've just got a couple of thoughts. Uh, Sandra Campbell, I've totally stolen your um, picture. Um, that's the bucket idea that, for those of you who may not have seen our stand with buckets, that's got um, cow tags, isn't it? Um, yeah, so, or you can do dartboards. There's a whole range of different ways of doing these things that isn't a boring um, feedback form. Mm. And yeah, let's face it, when it comes to getting feedback, you just need to make it interesting and bribery. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Anything else you'd add, Karen? No, I think. No. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so then the, the third insight here from the Extension Services Project, um, just around the, the number and the range of activities that have been run over the last quarter. So there were 237 um, activities or engagements uh, run by the regional projects uh, over the last quarter. So this included uh, workshops, one-on-one -on -one consultations, meetings, field days. Um, so all of these things that um, the projects are capturing the details of what they've been delivering uh, the number of people that have been attending so they're building up a bit of a log um, as a record of what they've been doing. Yeah. 
Nice. And this is really basic information, but it is useful to know how mm. many things have been carried out, all of that kind of stuff. So again, we were keen to know who's tracking activities. So our next Slido question, and last for the <laughs> session, <laughs> is do you track activities? And maybe you use a spreadsheet, maybe a CRM, maybe you just manually keep track or you don't keep track. Who's keeping track? Hopefully most of you. Ooh, -hoo, nice. Okay. Good stuff. Mm. Yeah. Lots of keeping track. Mm. It is really, um, yeah, it's simplest and easiest evaluation data to get because literally you're counting bums on seats, you're counting number of activities you've run, but that builds up into, yeah, what kind of impact mm. you can have. So, yeah. And, and it can be, an, you know, an easy thing to collect as you go along. It, it yep. does get harder if you're, you know, get to the end of the quarter or end of your reporting period and you're trying to remember back um, all of these things. But if you're logging these things into your spreadsheet or writing them down as you go along, um, it does mean you've got some real-time data as well. If anyone asks yes. how you're going, what attendance was like at recent events, you've got it all logged ready to roll. Yeah, that's good. That's our top tip, really. <laughs> Just keep up to date on activity tracking because you'll never remember even though you think you will. So, <laughs> yes. Alrighty, now we come to the bit that I think you've probably all been waiting for. I don't know quite how you've managed to contain your anticipation and excitement um, because we've been running a poll on our stand in the Knowledge Hub and we have had maybe 20 to 25% of the, the group come mm -hmm. through and vote in our poll. Um, and we've been promising everyone that we would give you feedback. We would show you the results of our survey, which was what is the hardest part of doing evaluation? We had some options. We had icy pole sticks. You could stick it in the bucket or you could write other. And so the big reveal, oh my goodness, what was the answer? Yes. Thank you. Drum roll. <laughs> Karen, tell us about it. <laughs> so, um, I'm the fanfare. Um, <laughs> so the, the hardest um, hardest part of doing evaluation, we had just over half of people that voted um, said that it's just hard to know what to evaluate, that there are a hundred different things that that you could choose and um, so it's hard to know sort of what to focus on what to prioritize um, we had about a quarter of people and actually probably this was the one that um, we, we did uh, force people to to rank just to choose one um, that they were torn that no one wants to fill out forms so as soon as you're you know giving something a uh, paper form with a pen that's hard <laughs> do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars yeah um, we had a, a few people say that it's hard to find time for evaluation um, Pleasingly, uh, yes. no one said that. that <laughs> I'm no celebrating that. I, I know there could be response bias because those who weren't interested in evaluation probably didn't come and talk to us. But that's okay. I'm going to take it as a positive. Everyone's interested in evaluation, so yay. Um, and then we had uh, about 16% of people in the, um, the other, and so they've written down some things for us. There were lots of things that came through there of um, you know just being really tricky to get that value proposition right, to be able to communicate that to your catchment groups about why you're doing this, and, and that can be tricky um, to, to nut out. Yeah. So we thought, well, what's our kind of top tip when, yes, it's hard to know what to evaluate. And there is a little irony in that we're talking about evaluation at the end of two days. And actually our top tip is to start thinking about what success looks like and what evaluation might look like for you at the start of a project, at the start of something. So go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Basically use a framework to try and figure out. This is one that we use all the time. There's lots of frameworks out there. Um, choose one. Use the one that actually works for you. This is based on Bennett's hierarchy. Um, for those of you who might know, happy to talk about that later. But basically leads you from project activities through outputs, participation, motivational change that leads to practice change, sharing um, what's happening and those changes, which leads to outcomes and impact long term. And if you can write down and figure out what success looks like at each of those mm -hmm. levels, then that starts to tell you what you might want to evaluate and the things you might want to monitor. Um, now, you can come up with a big list, Karen. So what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do when that happens? <laughs> That's right. So, um, so we'd, we'd recommend start with your big list. So start, you know, building up all of those ideas and then as a team work through those and identify, you know, which are the things that are going to take the, you know, the most time, the most resourcing and, and use those to sort of factor in the time and resourcing that you've got available. Um, and I guess it's uh, the, you know, the thing that we often say of, you know, for, for catchment groups or for projects, if, you know, in, in 20, 30 years time, 
you were you know, sitting back and, and your group had been wildly successful, what does that success look like? Yeah. How do you define that yeah. and sort of start there? So if that's the success you're trying to achieve, how will you be able to communicate that? How will you be able to define what that looks like? Um, and then develop the um, how you'll collect that information from there. But if you start with the big picture, yeah, everything else starts making a bit more sense and then you can prioritise. Absolutely. And don't worry if you still need to figure out how to collect some of that information, mm. start with where you can mm. and, um, and then figure out, make connections talk to people and figure out what else you can add as you go. Mm. So um, last three tips, Karen, I think from us is, yeah, that being clear about what success looks like, have the plan and try some different approaches. If something's not working, uh, people don't fill in forms, try a dartboard, try the buckets, mm. try different things mm. um, because, yeah, sometimes that's what you need to do to engage. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, also part of that having a plan is, um, you know, thinking about how you're going to be sharing the, the findings, the insights back with your groups. Um, you know, what's going to be interesting to them, yeah. what format will work well for them, you know, what timing does that work, um, work best for them um, and, and and do that. So, you know, it could be sharing things at an event. It could be posting some of the, the findings on Facebook. It could be doing some case study interviews with some videos. Just what is the, the best way to get that information back to, um, to the people that it matters to? Yeah. Excellent. And our time is up. Thank you for listening to the session about <laughs> evaluation and hearing about some of what we've been doing. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen and Denise for uh, showing us the power of chocolate and data. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, and it's, uh, it's always good know, uh, to know that you're paddling your waka in the right direction uh, and you can do it with data.